exactly. um, let, let's sort of uh, move over from the the uh, the logistics of, of of storage recovery into the sort of work and career uh, perspectives. This is a you know, cyber work podcast, so let's talk the work of it. So, um, what job? What are jobs like for people wanting to get into uh, backup and recovery as a career? If a listener was hearing us talk and is excited about all these different options and all these different ways to improve their their backup systems in their workplace, uh, what what types of hard and soft skills should they be uh, attempting to sharpen to make themselves a good candidate? Well, first off, I would say you know, welcome to a really really small club. Um, Mm -hmm. this is one, one thing that has been consistent in my entire career is that nobody wants this job. Really? Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's a, it's a real challenge actually historically. So again, back in the day versus now, back in the day, it was really hard to get someone to be the backup person, right? Hmm. The reason I got my first job in it was because a guy by the name of Ron Rodriguez, Ron Rodriguez wanted to get done at the job. He said, mm. I don't want to do this anymore. Yep. And, he, and, he, and he was like, who's the new guy? Oh, Curtis. Yeah. Curtis, you, you're the backup guy now. <laughs> Mr. Right? You're Mr. Backup now. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and, um, and honestly, I only ended up initially making this a career because through a series of happenstances that I did not control, I just never got out of it. Right. Yeah. And and suddenly I realized that I knew so much about something that. Yeah. That once you get good at something, about. you're like, I might as well keep going. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh-huh, uh-huh. And um, the so back then it was it was a real challenge and it but it was a good way to get a job in I.T. Yeah. Today, um, I would actually advise a person against making this like their career. OK. Right. For a lot of reasons, um, I would I would much more advise them to be focused in cybersecurity, mm-hmm. right? Um, because <laughs> that's never going away, yes. right? Right. Uh, storage management and cybersecurity and network management; these things are never going away. Mm-hmm. Backup and recovery, data protection, disaster recovery as a specialty is becoming smaller and smaller. Okay. And one of the reasons for that is backup. If you use modern tools, yeah, right. Um, you, you look at, so, so I, I, so I, I wasn't in the, I didn't grow up in the, in the vendor space. I grew up in the, in the end user and consulting space. Sure. I, I came to Druva just a little over four years ago. And, um, I remember making the joke that I, that I came there and, and I came there to do what I'm doing now, which is being an evangelist for the for the company. But I remember making a joke of like all of the skills and stuff that I had built over the last 20 something years, um, they were all worthless because none of them apply to our customers. All of this stuff about how to design a backup system, how to decide how much throughput you need and what type of tape drives, what type of disk drives, what kind of deduplication, all that stuff for our customers, <clears throat> they don't have to do that. They just have to tell us how much stuff they have yep. and, you know, and buy the right license. And like, we do all that backend hard work. Got it. And I think that, I think that as the world is sassifying, mm-hmm. right. If I can, if I can make up a verb. Absolutely. Um, as the, as we sassify more and more of the the um, the, the IT world, and as we cloudify more and more of the IT world, the skills that make a good backup and recovery person become actually much less needed. So mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I would I would actually advise someone against it. I would what I would say is look at uh, it, but if you are in it, right, if you are deep in the backup and recovery world, I would say make friends with your information security professional. Got it. And learn the things that can make that that can that can damage your backups and apply those and then just sort of slowly increase your skill set on that side of the world. So okay. I hope it doesn't sound like I'm sucking up to your audience, but no. <laughs> uh, you know, that, please do. That is, that is what that works it, out well know. for us. Y'all, y'all hear it yeah, right here I'm, first, man. Yeah. Like the, I'm, way I'm just saying, yeah. Yeah. I'm just saying it's not, it's not pandering. It, it, yeah. There will, there will be more attacks. There will be more sophisticated yep. just in the last four or five years, the, the, the degree to which ransomware has become much more sophisticated. Uh, you know, the exfiltration thing simply wasn't a problem. 
back in the day, right? Yeah. And now yep. it is, and it's it's just it's just only going to get worse. I'm excited to announce that our InfoSec Skills platform will be releasing a new challenge every month with three hands-on labs to put your cyber skills to the test. Each month, you'll build new skills ranging from secure coding to penetration testing to advanced persistent threats and everything in between. Plus, we're giving away more than $1,000 worth of prizes each month. Go to infosecinstitute.com challenge and start your challenge right now.